right, the new series we're starting this morning, or started this morning, is titled The Cross and uh, The Cross and The Cross and the Crown. And the test is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 11. The bottom line of the test is that Jesus Christ gave himself up to be crucified, to die the death of the cross. And the Bible says that therefore, because of what he did, therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him a name above every name, that the name of Jesus every name must bow. In other words, he embraced the cross and received the crown. You cannot receive the crown without, first of all, embracing your cross. The cross always precedes the crown. The Americans put it this way, no pain, no pain, no pain. No pain. No pain. That is it. This is a reality of life. The cross must always come before the crown. Without the cross, there is no crown. And that's why Jesus said, you take up your own cross and follow him daily. So there is a cross specific for you based on the destiny that God has mapped out for you, based on his plan and purpose for your life. There is a cross you must carry. That cross represents the sacrifice you have to make. There are certain levels of success you will get to, you get stuck or you play to. You can't go beyond that without certain dimensions of sacrifice. And sacrifice is in dimension. There are spiritual sacrifices regardless of whether you are a Christian or a satanist. There are spiritual sacrifices. There are material sacrifices. There are sacrifices of convenience and comfort. Without paying those prices, the height a lot of people are dreaming about remains a mirage. Remains an illusion. It remains in the realm of dream. They can only see and touch it in their dreams. There are certain dimensions of power you can possess. Not only in this nation. Do you know how many sacrifices? Let me not go there. But, but some of the most prestigious and honorable in quotes honorables. Do you know the kind of sacrifices they make before they get what they get? I'm talking about spiritual sacrifice now. Apart from the other kinds of sacrifices, there are certain dimensions. No matter how skillful, how hardworking you are, you get to that level, you can't go past that, that level. You want to go past that level, um, you need certain level of relationship. They call it relationship. We need to come into relationship. And that's how they present it. Relationship. We need to come into relationship. Just like God wants you to come into relationship. So they present relationship. And then of course, who doesn't like relationship? It's like the relationship that will get you to the height of your career. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So without the cross, there is no crown. At best, you're pretty in the realm of mediocrity. You're pretty at a lower level of your destiny. With all the abilities, with all the whatever, at a lower level of your destiny. I was in somebody's office many, many years ago. Many years ago, CEO of, you know, um, a notable organization. I was in his office. Then another, we were about five there in, in his office. So we were just talking. And then somebody began to talk about his encounter when he was working for one of the most notable men in Africa. In this country. 
as a director in that company. He said, one day at night, the man called him, said, see me at home. He was wondering, what does the guy want to tell me that can't tell me on phone? So he went there, he gets to the house. They kept him waiting till, for two hours. So around 12 midnight, 1 a.m., I told him, oh, guy is calling you. He was wondering, ah, bedroom. Go into the bedroom. He spoke to him for a while. He was wearing, he was tying this white native whatever. Ready for initiation. And then he now invited him into another room. That room was an altar. And the man said, no, give me time to go and think about this. It was, he basically told him that um, there's a next dimension of your growth in this space. But for that to happen, you need to be a part of the system. Say, so give me time. Let me go and think about it. And that was how he resigned. Now, I was hearing it from the horse's mouth. But this is a fact, not just in Nigeria, across the world. Some of them will even tell you in their music that, listen, forget about it. My own is written up. I've sold my soul to the devil. Some of them make incantations in their songs. Those are people who dance. They don't pay attention. And listen, you will never know how many people have become demon infested by listening to certain music. Demon infested. By listening to certain music. Oh, because music is one of the, one of the most powerful highways that spirits travel through. Oh, yes. That's why in those spiritual, spiritist churches, you begin to be certain drums. Hey, manifestation. Some of, why are you pretending as if you don't know? Some of you are coming from there. <laughs> Manifestation. Music are powerful vehicles for the transportation of spirits. That's why even in the, in the faith, there are certain things he will play. The atmosphere here will change. Straight away. I can't speak anymore. It will just be a pure move of the Spirit of God. Glory to Jesus. So, so as a politician, there are certain dimensions the fathers cannot allow you to get to except you come into relationship. Let's use the word relationship. There are certain dimensions the Godfathers will not allow you to get into. So they're going to a relationship for power, for fame, for success, and whatever else. Because at a certain level, you need supernatural forces to take you beyond there. There's a gravitational pull that puts a seal spiritually that no amount of hard work alone, I don't care who you are, no amount of hard work alone can get you past that phase. You need spiritual force to propel you beyond that gravity. Either of God or of the devil. Whichever one. A friend of mine that I've known for many years, and I didn't see her for you know, a long time, over a decade. By the time I saw her again, life had radically changed for her. I mean, when I say radically changed, so changed that I mean, she was now a bank manager, but that's not a change. Her salary as a bank manager was now her tight every month. And I'm like, how? Because when you see certain things, if you don't ask questions, you are not wise. So I, I mean, I sat that down one day. I said, so, I mean, tell me the story. How? From, from there, here, massive distance. How did it happen? And she laughed. And then she said, a time came in her life where she just got tired. She got tired of being at standing still, of just depending on her salary and the bonuses. 
She got tired of not having enough to do what God has put in her heart for the kingdom. Because she was part of the, of the you know, pastor's protocol team of a particular church. So she got tired of every time they are calling for whatever. I mean, she'll be watching others stand up to give significantly. And she will be there wishing and hoping that someday. And that day never really was coming. And she says she went, she went into a 70-day fasting. 70 days, not 17 days, not one day and seven minutes. Because some of you will fast for one day. The whole world won't hear. And yet you claim to be desperate. You're only really desperate for food. You see, the proof of desire is pursuit. If you want something bad enough, you have to give up something valuable to get it. That's the truth. That is a law. It's a law of sacrifice. The cross comes before the crown. Anywhere. 70 days. And she was not on leave. She was still going to work. So getting lean and lean and lean. We are complaining thinking she was sick, alluding to all kinds of sickness. She didn't care. She had gotten to that point where it's either I get it, I don't mind dying in this process, but I'm not going to stay at this level. Is it close to the end of the past? Cut the long story short, God brought her in contact in, to a relationship. You see, that contact could have happened long before that time. Yeah. Do you know some things can be delayed? Some things can also be fast-tracked. Yeah. The woman who came to Jesus, I think in Matthew chapter, chapter 15, and said to Jesus, please, my daughter is dying. She needs healing. And Jesus told her, listen, I am not sent to you yet. It's not yet your time. I'm sent to, um, to the Jews. It's not yet your time. According to the agenda of heaven, your time is still after my resurrection. It's not yet now. What happened? What exactly happened? She intercepted the agenda of heaven and brought her own miracle forward. In spite of the agenda of heaven, she got what she wanted. There are also destinies that can be delayed. And so she met this particular gentleman who happens to be, you know, a notable man across the world. And um, that is how everything changed. Gave her a contract to be supplying certain things. And before she knew what was happening, everything changed. She didn't need, even need a salary anymore. But she chose to still be working. By the time she was telling me this, several years ago, that she had built houses in Lekki. And her mission is kingdom. And she hasn't really changed much in terms of her dressing. She walked into this place, you, will ne you won't even look twice. Very simple dressing, no flam, nothing flam. But yeah, even the car came out, a simple vehicle. With somebody that you can hit a car on the road and we wonder how would this man fix this car? <laughs> Not knowing that she can fix you. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, now, but I said that to say this. She had to pay a price. Now, she could share that with me because of relationship and honor. She doesn't go around talking about it. No, no. And then she said afterwards that every year she doesn't fail. 70 days. Every year. 
We declare 21 days. Somebody's wondering, ah, God. What, what day is today? Are we up to? Today is number four. Number four. I thought we were in the day 14. No, it's 44. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are dimensions of wealth and success that is waiting for you. If you can pay the price. If you can pay the price. You see, the people you are trying to compete with, they understand these things. You think that they come just with natural ability. Oh, listen, just know your stuff. It's more than that. Ah, mana kude granusta. Ah, la kude pranusa via kuta. Lanu zokota. The battle is not to the strong. The race is not to the swift. There are some other things added to skill and hard work that brings it out. Otherwise, skill and hard work, hard work alone can lead to frustration. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Your skill alone will bring you frustration without added support. Without being aided supernaturally. You have to be aided. You have to be aided. In fact, in fact, that's, that, that, that's what the Bible says concerning the Holy Ghost. In Romans chapter 8, the Bible says the, the Spirit of God helps our infirmity. Now, the impression, the actual picture of that verse, helping our infirmity means you are trying to climb somewhere. And then somebody is lifting you, but you're actually moving your feet. But in reality, um, the stress of your progress is not on you, it's on the person carrying you. That's what it means that the Holy Ghost helps our infirmity or weakness. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but salvation. It's divine. It's divine. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I've read about all kinds of sacrifices made on the other side by politicians, celebrities, fame, of those who, who seek fame and power. It includes human sacrifices. Some human sacrifices are for the org certain organs in the body. Some is for the blood. Some is for the flesh itself because they have to eat the flesh for certain, you know, number of weeks or months in some cases before they can gain that power. There are other kinds of sacrifices, including sexual sacrifices. Some of them will would have to sleep with a certain number of virgins. Some of them to sustain the success, you have to rape certain number of people every month. Every month. It was years later, God began to give me understanding. Ah, you know, God is the beginning and the end. God knows you. God knows, tell your neighbor, God knows you. Hallelujah. God knew that whoever must take the button from Abraham, Isaac, and then to the next generation must be a man who understands the power of sacrifice. Abraham sacrificed his son Isaac. Isaac released himself to be sacrificed without any resistance. So you are not going to hand over to a man who doesn't value spiritual things. And God looked at the two of them, understood their inclinations, and decided, this one, forget it. And it played out. The Bible says, in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 16 and 17, message translation. 
He said, watch out for the Esau syndrome. Trading away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy a short-term appetite. You well know how Esau later regretted that impulsive act and wanted God's blessing. But by then it was too late. Tears or no tears. He called it Esau syndrome. Esau syndrome is the inability to make the required sacrifice now for where you are going tomorrow. Inability to delay gratification. Esau say, I'm hungry, I want it now. Jacob said, I've, I've, I've got one meal. So if I'm going to offer you the meal, you are going to give me something of value in exchange. Esau says, what? Jacob said, give me your bed right. Esau said, what a rubbish. Take my bed right. Give me the meal. Give me. So Jacob was willing to sacrifice his meal and delay gratification. Esau was willing to trade his future and his right in order to satisfy his appetite. Bible calls it Esau syndrome. And by the time he realized it, he was too late. Tears or no tears. That is how the destiny of some people are. They play away their lives. And by the time they realize it, tears or no tears, it's late. Don't be that person. Nothing just happens. There's always a price to pay for the top. If you ever desire and aspire to be at the top of your career, if you ever desire and aspire to be at the top of your industry, if you ever desire to be at the top of your calling, there are certain price and sacrifice you must make now. Otherwise, it remains an illusion. It remains a mirage. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. It's not going to happen. Glory to Jesus. The cross must always precede the crown. Jesus said, take up your own cross. Your own cross represents your own sacrifice. And there are different kinds of things to sacrifice. Somebody's, somebody's area of sacrifice could include, but not limited to, the need to fast. Sacrifice your appetite. Let it die. Make time for God. Make time for God. Invest time for God. Build your spiritual life because what you are asking God for requires a level of spiritual buoyancy that you don't presently have. That, that if they put you in that thing, you will sink. So it requires greater dimension of buoyancy. So when you get there, you sit on top of it. Doesn't swallow you up. Spiritual sacrifice. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Imagine somebody fasting 70 days every year. There are some people who go through a whole year that don't even fast one day. Even when the church declares fasting. They pretend like they are fasting. So they come. <laughs> but they are not fasting. They are just coming from Buka. <laughs> God is watching. So it's in our insult upon injury on God. You are not trying to deceive. That's the worst. Don't do it. You say, you say the future that God plans for you. Ah. It is too glorious for you to sacrifice it at the altar of present convenience and comfort. It is too glorious, too beautiful. And the destinies of multitude are attached to it. You see, you see, God wants to lift you to a height where you will become a light for many. 
and generations after will reference you. But you have to pay the price. You have to pay the price. Uh, for some people, it could be the price of cutting off certain relationships. Oh, if Abraham didn't cut off Lot, it would have remained grounded. If the people didn't cut off Jonah, they would have sunk. They had to cut off Jonah for them to get to their destination. There are certain relationships, if you don't cut them off, you remain where you are. You remain where, and, and it may not be that they are evil. Lot was not evil. Jonah was not evil. They are not evil. But it's just, it's just that their presence in your life have become a wall that you cannot break through beyond that level of accomplishment or progress except you get them out of your way. And then you cannot be talking about um, <laughs> financial dominion without financial sacrifice. It's not possible. I gave myself as an example. I think either in first or second service. I mean, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and pastors have that problem. Pastors generally have that problem. It's not just a problem with the pew. But I think if the pastors have more of that problem than even those in the pew because I minister to pastors a lot, and I've also had that problem. And I've heard certain people who I would never have believed that they once had that issue talk about how they used to struggle with it. And that's the word sacrifice when it comes to finances. So, so as a pastor, you think that once you are faithful, you pray and pray for the people, they will have enough common sense to know that, you know, when God blesses them, they'll bless you, which is actually the scripture. But you see, if, if common sense is common, everybody will have it. Do you understand? Do you understand? Uh -huh. Every pastor will tell you their own experience. As a pastor, I pastored this church where I had no car. And there are people with two cars, three cars. And they will see me standing at the bus stop. And they'll wave. Is that common sense? No, it's both natural and spiritual. There's no sense in that. In that. You are just passing by an opportunity for God to lift you, and you are missing it. So, but somehow, I managed to keep my heart pure and sane. Because under that condition, Satan would damage your heart. That's how come some people become crooked. That's how come some people become, you know, exploiters and users. They just, their heart just closes up and says, you know what? We are all in this game together. <laughs> yes. It got to a point one time, somebody called me and said, listen, man of God, you can't be going through this. He said, listen, sell oil. I said, ah. He said, listen, I mean, because he was doing well at that time. He said, part of my income is to oil. I just buy oil and I tell them that this oil, blah, 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 blah. When you use it, blah, blah, blah. So this one is 5,000 naira. This one is 15,000 naira. And, and they are rushing it. So with that, um, I, I listened to him because he's a man I respect. But in my heart, I knew that God forbid, I'd rather die of hunger than do it. I would rather honestly die of hunger than do it. Because number one, both my natural and spiritual heritage are not like that. I told you a story of how somebody came and said, Pastor, pray. There's a business I'm trying to get. Once I get that business, Pastor, I'll say to you, ah, he told me how much, ah, heavy amount of money. I went into prayer, so. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I said, God, ah, this one, you don't do ammo. Makia <laughs> kudogota. 
I prayed. So each time I will call him, he will be giving me progress reports. Yes, yes, you have gotten to this stage. Pastor, pray more. Don't worry, don't worry, forget about that. That's my part. So finally, <laughs> the contract came, they paid him. So he came to testify that they paid him. He said, Pastor, I will see you. I was very calculating. Because I know the amount of profit. It was millions. This is somebody who has never touched. I don't think he has ever touched 200,000 in his life before then. Millions. So, after a while, I began to grow impatient. I asked his wife, how far is your husband? <laughs> so the day it now finally came, came with brown envelope. And the envelope was fat. I'm like, could this guy be this generous? This envelope is heavy. But when I took it from him, it was way more than Mula. Ah, my spirit, first of all, Sank. So when he left, I opened it. It was a Bible. I couldn't believe it. I was, I was disappointed for this. Ah! Maybe he wanted me to search for that scriptures. Ah, I struggled to ensure that I don't get offended. And when I'm struggling like that, I pray for the person. I kept praying for him to ensure that my heart, no offense. But that was my journey. There are times I got discouraged, like God, there was a time, I will confess, there was a time I told my wife, I won't pray for anybody again. I'm telling you. So for one week, I didn't pray for anybody. But my heart couldn't take it. Because I knew the implication. I knew the implication. I just said, God, okay, no problem. <laughs> it is well. If you don't reward me here, you reward me there. <laughs> The love of a pastor. So, I, I was like that for a long time. Rent would be a problem. L landlord or even agent will embarrass me. But you will not, I mean, I will come, no sign. We, we, have, we have been locked out of this hall more than once. Yeah. Then, because I thought that just be faithful. That's all. Until I began to, you know, God in his mercy began to open my eyes to see that the law is that every seed produces after its own kind. Financial seed is what produces financial harvest. Even though prayer can open the airwaves. It can open the airwaves. But there are certain practice that you must engage in before you begin to see rewards of your faithfulness. So I began to sow. I caught the revelation, I began to sow. I began to give. I began to give. Sometimes I will give the last in my account to somebody, and the person will send me a message and say, um, man of God, this is not enough. Can you please send me some more money? I would have to send the person 
a, a feedback that I wish I can, but I can't. In some cases, I will have to screenshot my account balance and send. Because they don't believe. It doesn't make sense that somebody is sending his... So they, they don't believe it until they see the balance. I was living like that. I didn't see... I didn't begin to see massive habits immediately. No. It lasted for a long time before I began to see harvest. And God took me out of that level of not having at all. So I was on the, on the next level of having, but never enough. After a long while, I decided to radically begin to break out of that level again. And started another journey of sacrifice. Whatever I could lay my hands on, I was told. Money, things, whatever. Whatever. Like a madman. Sometimes I'll call, you know, somebody will sow a seed. As soon as I want to use it, I just feel impressed in my heart. No, 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 no. No, make this a, a seed. Make this a seed. I transfer it to the next person. So as I'm getting the seed, I'm transferring the seed. Why? I was looking for something. And then God now began to move me from that state. From that state. To a state where I could say that even though I'm still far away on the track, but um, God has been my Ebenezer. Yes. Let me just put it that way. I mean, you've heard it from me repeatedly. The seed I sowed last year alone is more than any five years or more of my entire life. We are still within the first month of the year. I mean, this is day four of the second month. So, still within five weeks. The seed I've sown this year alone is more than most years, most single year, within the last few weeks, more than most single years. Most single years. And this year alone, apart from the annual major sacrifice I take to my father in the faith, which I did, what I did last year, he saw it and said, this is, this is huge. This year it was times two. So I said, this, he said, this is really, really big. And he prayed for me. In fact, as soon as he took the check, saw it, this is really big, pulled me on my knees. Ma de Cotoniga. I mean, the spiritual investment this time was, was more than any other time. And I receive it with open heart. Because there are certain things you cannot do except you are aided spiritually. Either by darkness or by light. At certain level, you connect with heaven. And God cannot begin to breathe on you. His mind. His mind. God can count on you. When God is able to count on you, you know you have made it. Regardless of what you are seeing or what you are not seeing. You may not see anything, but just know that you have made it. Even if you are still trekking, if God can count on you, forget it. It's a matter of time. You become a steward. Which means that God can say, okay, um, Lawrence, keep this two billion. So the two billion is there sitting in your account. But he will permit you to do whatever you want to do, you know. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And without any stress, he sign it, extend it. And you don't even act like anything happened. At that level, even if you don't have anything in your account, you have crossed. You say wealth is not cash. Is somebody here? Find out from truly rich people. Wealth is not cash. It's not cash. 
<laughs> there is a spiritual dimension of wealth, there is a psychological dimension, and then there is the mathematical dimension. Those are three dimensions. And each one must be complete before it can be truly wealthy. Now, without one, you can have money. You can even rise to the point of being rich, but it can't be wealthy. The three dimensions must be complete for you to be truly wealthy. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can't have the crown without the cross. Stand to your feet.